host, Jim Jockle. Today, talking about an article that just appeared uh, in uh, FXMM, written by uh, editor Eleanor Hill. Title is called CCR and CVA Seeing Things Clearly. And the basic summary is risk management is increasingly becoming a strategic activity as opposed to a back office burden. And with me today to talk about that of numerics is Pete Travnicek, financial engineer and uh, former trader on a CVA desk. Uh, Pete, how are you today? I'm doing great, Jim. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. And one of the things I wanted to drill down in terms of this report was a, a focus on a study done by Lepis. Uh, and it was uh, done on behalf of software provider of uh, SAS. And one of the key findings within this study as it focused was only a mere 5% of re respondents are capable of calculating CVA in near real time. And a further 24% were doing it intraday, and 71% uh, was still were evolving their plans. Uh, given on your past experience and, and also what you're seeing today, uh, give us a little bit of the history uh, as it relates to the way CBA is being managed as well as those barriers to entry in turn, you know, into achieving real time. Well, I think CBA is so operationally intensive where it, it requires to do it properly. It requires uh, numerous traditionally siloed or disparate groups to uh, exchange information freely within an organization. So if you look at a tier one bank, for example, they, um, they, when you start talking about transfer pricing, one area uh, will generally cringe when talking to the other area because that means that their bonus pool will either uh, shrink or, or transfer to somebody else. Um, where on the bank as a whole, they're fine, but each individual P&L owner um, has a stake. So that's where that's where it becomes kind of a political issue uh, internally, and you can have a bit of bad blood. So uh, that's that's the political piece. But then the operational piece is just gathering all of that data, whether it's uh, it's counterparty credit rates, it's getting collateral netting information, it's getting all of the uh, uh, the interest rate market data, the interest rate volatility surfaces, the FX vol data, um, and then scrubbing all of that because one trading desk may use. Um, close of business uh, marks based on one system uh, or based on one set of brokers and then another uh, in the same organization may choose to mark their books off yet uh, another set of, uh, of curves. So synthesizing those is no easy task. So when you start talking about scrubbing data and then you throw on the political element uh, and, and then we haven't yet talked about the, uh, the, the computationally heavy aspect of CVA, you're not just running a, a one single calculation um, like you would do for P&L purposes or a few calculations like you would do for doing deltas or uh, the standard Greeks, but you're doing multiple thousands of paths um, for each trade and then rolling those up to a single counterparty um, or to a, a larger parent which, which has a, a group of counterparties, it so becomes a very complex issue. So, Pete, let me uh, let me let me ask you a question. Uh, you know, tier ones have been uh, actively managing CVA through CVA desks uh, for for quite some time, and and clearly, you know, there are different levels of operations. Uh, but there's now this drive to bring it all together. What are the risks if you don't? What what's wrong with the old way? Why can't I just set up a desk and not worry about this holistic view that you're presenting? Well, you're probably holding too much collateral or getting overcharged um, by your counterparties for your collateral. Um, or you're creating too, too uh, thin of uh, bid offers um, for your trading counterparties. So all of those generally spell uh, uh, P&L losses or potential for P&L losses. And to that point, um, how much are we looking at as it relates to being competitive, as it relates to uh, your counterparties going f f uh, uh, going forward? Well, if you ignore CVA as, as part of your bid offer, you're going to look very competitive uh, to many of your counterparties or protect, uh, prospective counterparties, um, but you're shorting yourself on in doing that. You're exposing yourself um, to a higher m amount of risk in doing so. And uh, another element of this study which uh, uh, was very interesting is because it was looking uh, kind of across in terms of areas of concern and those surveyed uh, also kind of indicated one of the bigger challenges were 
um, collateral management, and the other, so they broke it down into four areas, collateral management techniques for hedging CBA, near-term, uh, near real-time calculations, and, and other. But collateral management is clearly uh, in, in people's minds. Bring us around the connection of, of CBA and collateral management and why this would be roped up in the survey in this way. Oh, that's a that's a it's a loaded question. Um, to get to get a proper CVA, you have to include collateral as as a component of that. And because your trades are constantly changing, you know, every second, every minute uh, of the day, in as much as markets are open uh, or changing, um, and then getting all of that data to flow through your system. Is is incredibly difficult. Uh, not just because you're, um, you're you're handing things off between these disparate systems, um, but just because the calculations of the of the potential exposure are are so intensive. And and that's where your collateral comes in. It's not just um, it's not just your actual mark. It's how it's compared uh, over previous marks. Sometimes it's it's weighted average of multiple days or months. Uh, but then it's the potential future exposure that you're going to hold internally. So you can see how it kind of uh, it straddles um, your existing exposure and also your potential future exposure. Well, Pete, thank you so much for today's insight. And uh, the article, again, was CCR and CBA Seeing Things Clearly, uh, written by Eleanor Hill, editor of FXMM, uh, available online. Pete, I want to thank you so much for your time, and I hope you'll join us again in, uh, in the future for some more insights. Thanks, Jim. And you can follow Pete on LinkedIn, uh, as well as joining the conversation with Numerics on Twitter, at NX Analytics. And, of course, we want to hear from you future topics going forward. You can follow our blog or follow us on LinkedIn, on the Numerics page, or on Twitter as well. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Pete. Thank you.